Good morning. I think I'm live. This is different to my other Facebook page. Interesting. Good morning. It's Leanne Peters here. I don't often do a live video on this page. So I want to thank you so much for being here and for your support and your uh, encouragement and your enthusiasm and your kind words about my work. I'm just, um, well, at times actually quite pleasantly overwhelmed by your responses. So thank you so much. I try not to you know, dig into them too much because I really don't want ego to take over, but I do acknowledge and thank you so much for your kind words. So today, when I'm coming to you now, is the 9th of March, 2024. And this is the day, five years ago, that my workshop burned down. So I've worn my, um, this is one of the last things that I created. I've created a bunch of, uh, pendants because I was doing a raku firing on that particular day and uh, so this is one of the last pendants I made about 10 I think so uh, the others sold but this is one that I kept from that day so I wanted to do a video just to kind of reflect just not for too long on the last five years because I mean five years ago right now the fire hadn't had, hadn't happened yet because it happened in the night but um you know, it was an extremely difficult time. It was it was uh, quite difficult, but I feel like I bounced back actually reasonably quickly. It was such a shock, I think. It, it just, you know, sometimes shocks, things take us by surprise and we're sort of stunned for a bit and then we have to sort of adjust ourselves because I know for me I get on a certain path or a certain momentum's going down a certain track and then to have that just suddenly stop is actually quite a shock and then it takes a little bit of time to adjust so um, yeah so what happened so it was uh, the 9th of March 2019 that was actually my that was a really big year for our family like uh, 2020 and COVID that was nothing <laughs> compared to 2019 so uh, 2019 was challenging and it started well there were lots of things that happened but uh, that's not for me to go into now but um, in regards to this fire it was you know I was just going around oh just saw a mouse run in the garden um, you know it was just like any other day I was firing up my raku kiln which is a little gas kiln and I had um, some sawdust which you use with raku and the sawdust kind of felt damp and it didn't really do what it was supposed to do so it was kind of annoying and it was the end of the day and then it started drizzling so I put this sawdust back into my shed into my workshop it was in a um, it was in a metal bowl and it was just smoldering but that was all and um, you know where there's smoke there's fire which I didn't really click into properly at the time till afterwards so you know, I didn't want it to get wet and even damper and do less of its job. So I um, packed it away in there. I left the shed door open and um, I fired a few things like these pendants. And um, I always go to bed earlier than Corey because he stays up. He's more of a night person. I'm more of a morning person. So I said to him as I was going to bed, you know, just keep an eye on the shed because, you know, I've just got some sawdust in there that's sort of smoldering away it wasn't even a big smolder and I made sure it was clear you know there wasn't papers hanging around it or anything so he went down to check after I went to not long after I went to bed and all was fine there was a little bit of smoke that's all and then within half an hour the whole thing was ablaze so um yeah so I woke up to um Corey coming in and waking me up and the power went off and anyway the whole Thing was just engulfed in flames by that time but it wasn't too close to the house so my son's car was nearby so we moved that out of the way and and the fire brigade come and put it out and turned off our power so we didn't have power for a day or two but because it was a long weekend but um yeah everything was charred so my kilns were my gas kiln and my electric kiln were all just burned out and gutted and the whole thing all my glaze recipes um, my glazes and all my tools and things like that and then our gardening things were all burned out so it was it was quite the shock and quite charred you know it was difficult at the time to see okay what's the point of this 
So once we caught up on sleep, because we didn't sleep at all, and we, we didn't have, it was really hot, I think, for memory, and we didn't have any power, so we didn't have, you know, the fridge we couldn't really use properly. But then a couple of days later, once I caught up on sleep and it all kind of sunk in the reality of it, I, I thought, okay, I need to really question my relationship now to clay because if it's only mediocre, then I might not want to rebuild that side of my life. So I didn't even need to think about it for long. I just thought about it very briefly. Okay, can I imagine life without pottery and I couldn't I really couldn't there's something about clay like I practice a lot of different types of artwork and art in different ways painting drawing uh, making pendants using cement all, all sorts of things but there's something about clay and I think it, I find it the most challenging but also the most rewarding there's something so tactile and so nice about clay I mean even just sitting here touching this pendant is I find just really beautiful and and these earrings are made out of clay or out of porcelain there's just something so tactile about it that you can't get from a painting and you can't get it from a drawing and you can't can't get it from many things actually that feeling of the clay and that feeling of the finished you know the shiny glaze and there's just something so nice about it that just feels so good um so i pretty quickly determined that i couldn't imagine my life without pottery so then I just was determined to rebuild and I was determined to take pottery to the next level. I was seriously, and without even thinking about it, I just wanted, to, okay, it's time to get step up now. It's time to get off the kitchen table and just be making mediocre things. It's time to upgrade my kiln. If I'm going to be getting another kiln anyway and putting power back into my workshop, then I'm going to be upgrading. So I knew that would take a little bit longer because it was all... You know, we didn't have insur I didn't claim any insurance on this. It was all just a, a loss of stuff and then uh, saving to get the next wave of things. So it took about 10 months and, you know, we cleared up the rubble and we set up the new shed and I got my power supplied, connected up again and um, upgraded all the power so I could get a bigger kiln and I found a bigger kiln. And then I was doing some workshops in higher firing pieces like porcelain, which I couldn't use in my old kiln. So it was quite exciting. It was a little bit frustrating because I, you know, I wanted to get in and use the kiln and I had to wait sort of like 10, well, I had to wait, I think about nine months. It took me about a month just to figure out how to use it and um, to, because it fires so hot um, and just kind of collaborate, re, uh, recalibrate myself with, this particular kiln but you know I did it it was expensive and it took time and it was um, it was it was interesting so now looking back it's been five years today since that fire and I'm just flabbergasted by um, oh, there's a frog coming up here somewhere um, I, I'm just flabbergasted by I'm just amazed by my journey in the last five years and really it's been four because if the fire happened five years ago today, and it was 10 months till I got going again, and I had also about nine months where I wasn't doing anything because we moved. So really, I'm only, if we take those time periods off, it's about three years or something of actual uh, studio time over this last five years that I've actually been able to practice this. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a frog somewhere in one of my plants here next to me that I can hear. Hi, Valentina. Um... So when I look back, I'm just amazed that I'm now in this position. I've just come off my second major solo exhibition and my first sort of real public one, I guess. Um, and it was just amazing. It was quite incredible, that experience. And having feedback that I could see from the public was pretty amazing because you sort of do your stuff quietly and sharing photos on the website is or online is not really a gauge of things, but actually having people come physically and looking and touching things is quite, um, it's, you know, it's quite informative to me as an artist. So, you know, at that time I decided I'm not going to be a hobby potter anymore, which I had been, you know, making at the kitchen table, having a little kiln and just playing with little things. Um, so... I was doing that for like five years prior 
and I use the fire as a push forward to take my ceramics and my pottery to the next level. I wanted to take it more seriously. I wanted to do it more professionally, more, um, I guess, move out of hobby potter and into more professional potter. So it's, I class myself now as sort of like an emerging um, potter or emerge, emerging ceramicist because I'm moving towards, I hope, more of a, a professional way where I... Um, where I'm doing more exhibitions and I'm selling more of the ceramics that I make. You know, one, actually quite a few people at the exhibition said, your pottery is so cheap, it should be double this. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but the thing is, I make so much, like I'm such a prolific maker, that um, I have to actually get, th things have to be selling at that cheaper price before I'm ever going to put my prices up. Why would I double my prices if it's hard enough to move the cheap, them at a cheaper rate? So I do find like I make more than I sell, let's say, but um, every time I make, I'm gaining more experience and more knowledge about the clay, which is exciting. So I've been doing pottery now since 2014. So this is also 10 years since I started pottery. So what do I want for the next five years? What I would love is to do more exhibitions. I'd love to uh, sell more pottery as well, more of my ceramics online and um, in shops perhaps or at events or whatever locally or in the country. I would love to do that. I'd love to make more of a name of myself in the ceramic sort of pottery industry or, or genre, um, which is quite big. And um, I'd like to just keep pushing myself, you know, keep learning new techniques i um, settling on things that I really love to make and I really enjoy making and um, seeing where that goes. Winning more awards is also fantastic. So I've already won four for humour in clay. So I think my clay seems to have a lot of character for some reason because I, don't, I mean I specifically made I think two of the pieces for humour but then others not. So <laughs> I think I'd, um, that might be a way that I, a, a, a sort of an area that I can focus on if I want to, but I'm very much just follow what feels right for me. I don't make things to sell. I make things that feel right. And I trust that there's a place for that in the world. So another five years time, it will be 2029 on the 9th of March, that'll be 10 years since the fire. And well, if I'm still here and still doing pottery, then that's going to be pretty special. So thank you so much for being here. And thank you again for your support and uh, your encouragement, and your kind words. And um, let's see where this journey takes us. And I'll see you soon. Thank you. And you can learn more about my ceramics actually at my website, leannepeters.com. But you can find a link to that on uh, the the uh, page description should have a link that you can follow. So have a great day and thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.